All right. Hi, guys. How are you doing? My name is Iyo. I'm a senior analytics engineer at Adutur. And today I will be presenting you about what makes a good BI dashboard. Uh, but first, I want to know if I'm audible or not. And I want to also to just know some, some of you. So just let's. What were you guys doing so far in your training? Then just let's recap until a few more to join before I start. But yeah, just introduce yourself and what you're doing, what just inspires you. Might be just a nice breaker. Publish this Okay, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, Yuel. Uh, my name is Abraham. Uh, just, uh, I just want to introduce myself. So we are uh, we we are working uh, for about uh, five, including this week challenge. We are working uh, on uh, almost five challenges now, and uh, the challenges so far are very interesting. I myself uh, personally, I don't have. Uh, data analytics background uh, i i have some uh, software development background but uh, after experiencing this uh, uh, five challenges uh, the field uh, is very uh, interesting it was very interesting for me and uh, i am expecting to learn more uh, for for the coming uh, uh, project too uh, thank you Nice, nice. Thank you, Abraham. So yeah, I think if you have that background, it will be interesting to know more about analytics. And yeah, I think that's great. If you have any questions, you can also ping me, and I can guide you in whatever you want to. In my past, I want to show like what, how I came to the analytics and how what inspirations I found in analytics and how like what I do. So yeah, uh, anybody else? One more. All right. I think this part is a little bit shy. <laughs> so we can start. Let me present you. Can you see my screen? Yes, we are. Okay. Okay, so today this presentation or this meeting will be about what makes a good business intelligence dashboard. So before we proceed, I want to just first introduce what business intelligence dashboard is and what features does have like to be a good business intelligence dashboard. So the first thing is like uh, we want to identify what our users are, who our users are. So when we just try to build a dashboard, so what we are doing to first thing always was to know like what, what who will be using this dashboard. So who are my audiences? So understanding that is an essential key element of to design what kind of dashboard you want to build. So there are different kinds of dashboards for different purposes or different uh, needs. And you have to identify like what are your audiences and which are like uh, the most used by whatever that person is. So in this journey of uh, business intelligence dashboard design and building from scratch, first, it always starts from the data. So what are like, uh, how like the data journey looks like. So before we, we start building a dashboard, we have to first identify the data sources. So there might be several data sources or 
sometimes you have to also gather those uh, data yourself so this data can be found in apis in google sheets in csv files in databases so the first part is like identifying what kind of data do i have in what are the sources of this, this data and then the, the second thing is like you have to ensure the data completeness in the relevance of that data so this is why like uh, first we have to identify who is our user using that dashboard so identifying that in the purpose of that dashboard is the first thing like to identify that means when you are in the data collection process or if you have been given the data you have to make sure like the data is complete and relevant to the dashboard that you are you want to build and after you have the data and identifying those data sources, the second thing is you have to clean the data and transform. So basically, in real world, there is no like clean data that just consumes uh, to a dashboard. So uh, from whatever database or Google files or APIs you have found, those data are extracted yourself. Yeah. Second part is you have to clean it. So maybe there might be duplicates in that uh, data. There might be errors, for example, in edit format there might be like other entries being put there and then you have to also standardize the data format so i'll show you in google sheet like the data format so if it's number if it's currency if it is a date you have to also make sure that's exactly the data format you need because uh in all of the dashboard uh, designer tools if the data format is not correct you will you'll encounter errors so it will be just like hectic you know, to design that dashboard. So you have to standardize that and then transform the data. So the third part is like uh, some of the data might need uh, processing, like from the raw data. So let's assume if I have uh, a sales data of a daily basis and we want to calculate like a monthly of that data sales. So we have to aggregate that data and it's be uh, label. Uh, if you need a normalization for skewed data, uh, we we'll have to also like uh, make that analysis and transformations for the data. And the third part is uh, data storage. So after you have collected or identified the data sources, and you have also make sure the data is complete, and you have also cleaned and transformed the data. Now you have you want to store somewhere where the dashboard is consuming that data. So that's where we can choose like Google Sheets, CSV files, SQL servers, like have so many options depending on what kind of dashboard we'll use. Uh, so these are the basic uh, data journey when you think about uh, building the dashboard. So second part to have to always think about starting to design a dashboard is what is the story that I want to tell with the data I have. So first we have identified the user of the dashboard who is the creator of that dashboard. So basically, uh, in a company setting, for example, you'll encounter you have uh, to build a dashboard for a higher level management. You want to build a dashboard for uh, an engineer. So there are like different kinds of users in different kinds of formats, and uh, we have to sure we have to make sure that who are our audiences to use our dashboard, and what kind of story I want to tell with that data. That basically depends on the user who will be using that user, that dashboard. So basically, you know the data when you are cleaning in the previous steps and uh, processing the data. You have uh, some familiarity with the data itself. But since after you have designed the dashboard, mostly people will not see the raw data that will be consumed by the dashboard. So we have to first give them the feel of like how this data is like what are the range of this data, what are like the top stats and the high level metrics of this data. This is where we start. For example, let's assume we have, we want to analyze uh, sales data of a uh, shop. And since uh, if that shop has a different branch scene, let's say in different cities, and you have also extracted all those uh, city sales data uh, in the top stats, in the high level metrics, we, we want to show like, these are like the number of stores in these different kinds of cities. So now the audience, the user will have like that flow of the volume of the data, the data and the variety of that data is. And uh, if like if, if it's also a time-based data, you have to also mention like which, for example, 
on this challenge case i think it is an advertisement on the telegram channel so which uh, data section are you analyzing is it 2024 is it 2020 or which quarter or which week so it depends on the grand granularity of uh, the data so basically if you start with the overview and the high level metrics that's where like you uh, have one entry point for your audiences like to give them a feel of like the data and change the overall things and then the next part after like showing the high level metrics now we're going to drill down to insights so this is where we enable our users or our audience or audiences that uses the dashboard uh, give them the hand or the, the freedom to explore the data by themselves so we can use filters interactive elements to just break down the data that are seeing the visualized uh, data in different kinds of settings so here for example if you have uh, let's say two-year data 2024 and 2023 you can give them a year selector so that they can just filter which years they want to see and the dashboard will automatically just uh, filter the data according to the selected uh, parameter and the visual storytelling part is also the thing so when you build a dashboard you have to also know or have like that experimental stage in your draft dashboard before publishing it you have to taste like what kind of charts do i want to use so there are multiple chart options graphs and visual informations you can play around so you have to just taste which are like the basically consumed by that chart type so the data leads you a kind of like what kind of charts you want to use also like what kind of insights you want to give is also the next thing that you have to understand uh, to choose a chart from and to give the simplicity or the complexity of uh, the storytelling that you want to tell so i'll show you like in the demo part like what kind of things like uh, to consider or some best practices that just are there and in the insights part so basically a comparison is a good uh, insight so if you are analyzing uh, the data you can compare it for example from the previous time period or if it is a different category you can compare it compare it with a different category so it depends on uh, what kind of comparison you want to have if the data is have anomalies if it has a trend for example if it's a time series data uh, basically you can show like the trend of how that time series data is performing uh yeah so this is where like now we want to focus on the storytelling part and there are some essential elements of uh, a good uh, business intelligence dashboards so i tried to uh, summarize it up into four where i've learned it from my experiences so the first one is uh, clarity and simplicity so here i want to tell you like how i got into like this uh, information so previously uh, i didn't know like how to uh, create uh, visualized uh, data and the first thing that how where i learned like how to visualize the data what inspired me was just to create some dynamic some colorful some kind of just like when a user sees it kind of attractive so what i understood so far is it's not like how beautiful or how like attractive that dashboard is it's about the information you tell in that dashboard and how clear and simple is uh, you are transmitting that information that you want to pass so this is where like you should really focus because if you just google into good bi dashboards you see like multiple uh, images of dashboards so you can just see like and uh, see yourself like which one do you feel more comfortable reading that so that's where you know which one is the clearer or the simpler one and avoid cluttering informations or duplicating informations again here it's also prone to have a duplicate information in different kinds of uh, charts so that's where you have to make it simple and clear and you have to also use an, an intuitive design in layout so like what is the flow of uh, the dashboard so do will it have uh, multiple pages or will it be just one scrollable uh dashboard so you have to also choose a kind of uh, layout and design you want to follow the second part is the real-time uh, data so dashboard basically by its nature when 
should be like the up, up to date data always. So this is where you have to always make sure like the data that you are using and the audience that uses that dashboard are getting the real time data or like uh, updated and refreshed data. So this is where like they can have uh, up to date information when they are using that dashboard and they will make uh, a best decision using that dashboard. And then, yeah, user friendly interface is also another thing. So this is where you have to make uh, accessibility. So accessibility means like, for example, if you share your dashboard, you have to make sure that the other party can able to see uh, the dashboard can access it. So we have to also make it uh, filtering options, uh, multiple breakdown options to give them to interact with uh, the dashboard itself. So you have to make it user friendly. You have to make it like informative enough and uh, exploration like filters and breakdown elements. Uh, you have to utilize those. Um, the fourth one is actionable insights. So basically, we have we made a clear and simple dashboard, and we made it a real time, so it, it has a fresh data. We have also made it a user friendly interface. And now what? So this is where the exact like uh, part that you should really focus. So what am I giving? Uh, why am I giving that information in the dashboard, and who is using that, and what kind of insights am I generating? So this is where, like, uh, depends on the different kinds of businesses, uh, those actionable insights. So, for example, if uh, it needs an improvement in, or an opportunity area, you have to highlight those, and this uh, value is like a dropping. So, like, it needs an improvement kind of insights, or if it has an opportunity, or if it's a comparison, or so it depends on the business uh, elements that you are uh, using. Those are actually the four essential elements of a good BI dashboard. So we have uh, tools and technologies developed to to use a different kinds of dashboard to build a different dashboards. So this is again like where you should stop and first think like what kind of dashboard tools are there and which one is uh, the one that's uh, useful for me or what which one is relevant for me so for example looker studio is previously known as google data studio so if you have a google account an email account uh, basically you have since you are in this meeting uh, you can just have a free uh, account for looker studio and you can build uh, free dashboards and give uh, accesses to people to share freely so let, there are also tableau microsoft power bi uh, we have also open source dashboard tools, Redash, SuperSet. So if you can Google, uh, you can just see like so many multiple options. But these are uh, basically the the industry recommended ones. I hope to say. And basically, when you choose a dashboard, you have that comparison criteria. So the first one is ease of use. So if the dashboard you want to build is really making hard for you like to build that that's not easy to use so you have to be comfortable when you build your dashboard saying when you just it, it should not crash it's, it should not like uh, have limited features so that's one ease of use you can compare with the second one is customizing options so some dashboards only uses in their uh, ecosystems so they might not allow you to use a different data source format or they just have that limited options. So how can I customize this? How can I share this to people? Uh, what kind of uh, integrations can I make? So integration capabilities is also uh, if you can kind of connect your dashboard to a database, a file system. So these are basically comparison criteria. You can uh, drill down to more criteria as you go on. But if at least you should like compare the tools you have with this uh, easier fuse and customization capabilities and integration capabilities, I think you can find a good dashboard that's uh, easy to use. So before I go to the example workflow, I need to ask you if you have any question or clarity. Or even if you can, I mean, okay, Danny. 
please go. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, how do you make uh, the dashboard know the arrival of new data? How do you know if your dashboard is? The arrival of new data, I mean, to refresh itself automatically. Okay, okay. I will show you that in the demo part. That's a good question. Any other question that you have in your mind up to this point? I think it's basically straightforward. Um, yeah, so let's continue. So this is, for example, I tried to create a simple example workflow from uh, the challenge sheet that helps. The first one is, as we said, data collection. So there is an advertisement performance data in a Tiki Byte a Telegram channel. And I hope it's all already collected and given a new NSAC format. If it's not, you have to collect it yourself. And for the app reuse data, you have to also uh, extract it from Google uh, Play Store. Uh, once that's it, it's stored in Google Data Sheet, and you have to make sure like the data is clean and it's not duplicated. So basic the data cleaning processes, and you have to before like uh, starting to create the dashboard, you have to make the data analysis. So here you have to explore like what's the range of the data you have, even like what are the maximum values, what are the minimum values, if it has any zero values. So we have to make sure like those uh, basic uh, exploratory data analysis. And then once you have that, you, you start to have uh, a list of questions uh, to design that dashboard. So what are the informations needed in the dashboard? So what do I want to present in the dashboard? So that's where you know after your data analysis, how many data points you have, what are the maximum values, what's the time span, the time range, the volume of the data, how many columns do you have, and uh, like these kinds of things will lead you to have a list of questions. And then, yeah, the dashboard creation. So I will show you in a demo part, but before that, uh, the key takeaways from uh, designing an effective BI dashboard starts with a clean and organized data. So you know the term garbage in, garbage out in the computer science or IT field. So that basically works here too. If you have uh, not clean data or not organized data, you will not basically have a functioning dashboard at all. And then the second part is, why are you trying to create that dashboard? So what's the uh, use or what's the purpose of that dashboard? So that's where you need to start your storytelling uh, to have like that impactful insights. You have to choose the right tools and you have to make sure like it's a user-centric design. So that means for your audiences, how easy is easy is to use, how understandable is, how insightful is. So those kinds of questions are also a good BI dashboard hub. And then regular updates and actionable insights. So once you have built a dashboard, you have to make sure if it has uh, refreshed data or not, or if it is updated or not. Uh, yeah. So basically that's it, and now we'll continue to a demo part. Let me reassure you on screen again. Let me show you the picture. Okay. I heard transition is too bad. So let's go to looperstudio.com. So here is how uh, it looks like when you just log into looperstudio.com. So you can create a new uh, reports, you can also create a new data sources. And I choose, uh, as I said, I basically uh, like Looper Studio to use since it's free and you can share it uh, for free for people to use. And you can make it copy, you can connect it to Google, uh, Google Sheets and if you, when you update your Google Sheets, it also automatically updates uh, the dashboard. So that's have like the cool features for free you have. Uh, so we can create also from templates. So there are um, 
templates you want to use uh, basically designed by Looker Studio team. Or you can also create yourself from scratch. So let's just start from scratch. So here is a blank Looker Studio. Now when you just uh, first create a blank uh, dashboard, uh, you want to make sure which data connectors do you want to use. So it gives you multiple options to connect your data form. So uh, here we will use a Google Sheet. Then once you are in a Google Sheet, it will automatically have the list of uh, spreadsheets you have like on by me. So if I go to my drive, I have uh, so many like Google Sheets. That's where it will show you like that. Then which one of uh, the data that you want to have. For example, I want to use this uh, bank's data. Then once I'm in the, for example, this one, it has a multiple sheets. So, you know, like in Google Sheet, you have uh, multiple sheets. So here, for example, you have uh, different sheets for different kind of banks. So specifically, which sheet you want to connect, also you have to mention that in the dashboard. So I, once in this, makes me choose like which one is it. So I'll just go with uh, the one one for this example. And here it's, it is automatically like opt out. So you don't need to change anything this. So this will make the first row as headers. So when you have a, a sheet or a table, basically the first line is uh, the names of the columns. So that's a header, it's called a header. And we want to, when you make use this, uh, the Looker to understand that the first rows are uh, the headers. Uh, yeah, so now I will add it. I just jumped the, the data cleaning and the data pre-processing part, uh, since I think, I hope you have uh, already fixed that. Yeah, it will ask my permission to add into the report, then I'll say yes. Now, it's just like first create one table and just give to this. So the rows are the first, like uh, the menu bars are where you find like the file. If you want to edit, view, insert here, we have multiple insert options when, where you can choose like the chart types you want to use. We have also pages. You, you can have like multiple pages uh, in Looker Studio. So if I am like, you can rename the pages. So this is how like, uh, multiple page options you can have. You can also arrange the order of the page uh, items itself. Yeah, and then we have also in the menu bar, you can also create like the timing layout part. Again, we first delete this table since we don't need that. Then here, it says we have add chart option. And in the right part, we have the column of the data that's connected. So I'm connected to this UA data. If you go to UA, so since we have the date, post link, view, post hour, the bank and time of date. And you can see like these are the columns connected. And you can see like there is also an option like says ABC in next to them, or if it's like kind of link, or if it is a number. If it's a date, for example, this one, as you can see, it says APC, but it is a date format, so we have to correct that. You can correct it both uh, multiple options. So the first one, you can go to the sheet itself and make this one, for example, as a data format. If I can change this to date, and if I can refresh the data here, it should change but sometimes if you, if the data is not changes here for example there are white spaces here so it's getting hard like to change that into a date format so this is where you need like to clean this as a formatting there are also other options to change the data types here for example if you can uh, you can add parameter and if you go back to fields you can see like the columns of the sheet and their type. So the bank is 
pixel type, or if I want to change it into my current format, can do that. For the date one, I want to change this in a date and time. So in a date and time format, again, we have uh, different uh, formattings. So which one do you want to choose? So basically, if you can choose the date one, it says you can convert the date, and you have like these kinds of uh, error issues. So let's go back and connect with a different one with a cleaned um, with a clean dashboard. Or let me just simply okay. This one is not changing the format. I want to create. Channel the one. And so, excuse me one moment. I think Google is updating something, and okay, that I am patient. At the one, I Okay, I think it is this student itself. Not changing. I want to use this data. If you also want to make another connection with a different Google Sheet, so you can connect with multiple uh, Google Sheets or multiple pages, I can also go. Sorry, guys. Make sure we get my dreams about it. In the meantime, if you have questions so far, please. Um, yep, it's breaking up on my side. You will, um, okay, yeah, uh, so are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, not shall I stop the recording or no, no, I want to. Okay, I'm just losing my data that I wanted to demo. Okay, okay. In the meantime, if you have questions, I'd like to. Jesus. If you are not asking a question, then that means I, I don't know like if you are understanding it or not. 
make it a culture to ask. There isn't like a simple question or Okay, I think I can do a different yeah. Let's share my screen. Apologies for the inconvenience. All right. So assume we have connected the data sources and uh, we have the columns here, and this is how a clean dashboard starts. So you can just add a chart, and you can choose what kind of charts do you want. For example, let's just basically use a table. Here, I only want to show like how simple it is to use Looker Studio. Basically, all the others are also kind of the same. Once you know a Looker. You can be familiar with uh, Microsoft Power BI or Tableau. So here is now the table, and here you can see like there are two green uh, columns connected to this. Uh, I don't want this dimension to be here, so I will remove the post link. Now you can see there is metric, and then in the metric I can also like choose which metrics do I want to show. Let's just say view. Now this is the total view. Some, but there is no like breakdown. So if you were in the dimension part, you can just click and from the columns you have, you can choose. You can also from here drag and drop. For example, I can choose the bank and see like the values are now breakdown by that. If you want to see like the date too, you can add multiple columns and see how it adds. So this is the simplest way you understand like how the problem is adding it and how it functions. Let's remove this and let's use another one. I want to use a pie chart. So donut chart or pie chart. Now in a pie chart, it's kind of different as you can see. So now in the dimension, what do I want to see? So I want to compare the banks. So now, as you can see, the pie chart is already break down by the banks. And what is the metric I want to show like the pie chart to have? It's not the record count. I want to have, for example, view. Now, here, again, you can change the calculation of that. So it is a number. And if, you, if I want to average, I can basically change that. If I just want to count all, if it is the max, so you can choose whatever uh, like the aggregations you have, depending on what you want to show. So you can move this chart here and you can add, let's say, bar chart. So I want to put bar chart again. Now, it already understands, like, since I'm comparing uh, banks, and just automatically add uh, another chart, it tries to get kind of same, but here, I want to see, for example, the time of the day. So we have a different time of the day, and each one is getting more view. So it's here view. I want to see the average one. So comparison, but so in average, as you can see, they are all like not that much different. That's how you know, like this is the exploratory data analysis gives you. So if it's total sum, the after session has more uh, views. But yeah, this is how like you choose. What you want to show. If you have a date format in your data, you can also choose a time series. So, this is how you can plot the trends. Basically, when you use a time series, make it like longer horizontally uh, to have like more uh, data. Now, I'm now in this part since it's selected. See, I didn't select anything, so there is nothing here. I selected this chart. Now it's bringing up everything to customize this specific chart. In the dimension is date, but I don't want to be the date as itself, like August 24, December 14, you can see April 5. I want to be at a monthly. So here, 
in the data type. I want to change this elements. Since now I have January, February, March, so it became mainly granularity. Again, what is this showing me? It's the same uh, view. If you have like multiple uh, uh, multiple numerical polymers, you can choose and compare those. And I want to break down this, for example, by bank. Okay. See, now you can see the trend of each di different banks in a time series manner. If you want to change this in a different one, you can go here and let's say we want to make this an area chart. So you can choose like different kinds of charts. So I want to make this area chart. Now see, it's more visible and depending on the colors, you can see which bank has, um, which uh, month of the year has a performance. So yeah, this is how you can add and you can play with the different charts. There are multiple and like many, uh, chart options you can play around with. Yep, I think this is it for this tutorial. You can explore more on uh, internet to have like more intuitive feel about it. Let me know if you have a question or not. I will take the silence as you have no question after all. So can I ask a few questions? Can it summarize okay, uh, okay, I have uh, one question. Uh, for uh, for our challenge for this week uh, challenge. We we are not uh, going to use the the Looker Studio. We are we are going to use uh, some other dashboard uh, dashboards. So I noticed that uh, doing uh, implementing a dashboard uh, in Looker is very easy. So uh, maybe we should do the design of the dashboard on the Looker or. Uh, and then migrate to the migrate that the same design into other other dashboard because once we 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 get into the technical part of implementing the dashboard it's, it's very hard to see the design uh, and to create that uh, user centric uh, and uh, good uh, ui part yeah yeah so do you get on, yeah, yes i think when you ask that question, I also remembered I didn't answer your question how we can make the dash the data refreshed, right? Yeah, yeah, also so, also that part too, yeah. Yeah. So uh let me first answer the refreshing part. Now I just connected this data with a uh, Google Sheet, and when I am updating the Google Sheet here, so if I add another entry or if i change whatever value depending on uh, the results coming you don't have to do anything in the dashboard automatically it will refresh the data i think it hourly basis i'm not sure about that but if you want to be refreshed now you can just refresh it and if you want to share it yeah so this is depending on so you have to make it public accessible or give uh, permissions for whatever you really want to have that's it. And for the question of using a different dashboard and using Looker just for the design part, I think you can do that. So what I like about Looker, as I told you, was the simplicity. So this simplicity makes you just have that a simple design or whatever you want to design here and see itself as if it's functioning or not. And you can duplicate this or you can recreate this in a different uh, dashboard tools. Again, another part I also remember, you can add a different kind of filters and look at two. I think it's also everywhere available in different. So I want, for example, a drop down one. And what do you want to choose? The time of the day? No, I want to choose, for example, yeah, I think it's a bank. Now I have a filter. 
click you want to select so this is how i'm allowing my user who ever using this dashboard to have multiple uh, filters and breakdowns to see this uh yep yeah, have i answered your question Abraham? i think my need could uh, break up and uh, i didn't uh, listen your your answer but i will uh, go on to the recording and i will listen thank you okay, yeah. okay. no worries you're welcome any other question so once you have the that clean data that you can build the dashboard in whatever tool country so it, it doesn't matter which tool you want to have if you want to look at tableau microsoft power bi so it doesn't matter and uh, if you have that clean data you can replicate the same thing in a different kinds of uh, dashboard maker tools so basically it's all about depends on the data you have and how clean and organized your data is awesome i think we have almost an hour presentation I hope you have guys learned something and I'll see what what you will build. Bye. Thank you.